Hey, I am having the best day, to be sure. And it just made me want to tell y'all a story, a little story I heard the other day about some goats. There was three of them. They was billy goats. Name a gruff. Now, there was a little billy goat gruff. Bleh, hey, y'all. There was a medium-sized billy goat gruff. Oh, uh, well, hello there. I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. And there was a big billy goat gruff. So, they was living in this pasture. Now, this pasture had two parts to it. The first part of the pasture is where we find them today, because it was springtime, kind of like it is now. And that grass was green in the springtime, and so that's where the goats wanted to be in that time of the year. And they were eating, and they were so happy. Well, you know how it is around here. After a while, that sun started to get hot, and it baked down on that green grass, and it got drier and drier and drier. And finally, that little billy goat said, Meh, I believe we're going to have to have find some more grass, y'all. We're about, we're about out of something to eat. And the medium-sized billy goat said, Well, I do believe you're right. I believe our provender is perishing, and uh, we may have to seek our sustenance elsewhere. That middle-sized billy goat gruff, he liked to talk fancy and using them big words. I don't know why. Big billy goat gruff? He just looked around, said, let's go. So off they went. They headed for the river because they knew on the other side of the river was a pasture that always had nice green grass, even in the hottest part of the summertime because it was shady and the grass could grow and there was plenty of water for it. So they knew it was on the other side of that river. So they headed for the river. And when they got to the river, it was, uh, wasn't that wide, but it was wide enough. And uh, little Billy Goat Gruff, he, he looked at it and uh, he said, well, I don't think I can get across that river, y'all. It's, it's just a little bit too wide for me. And the medium-sized Billy Goat Gruff took a look and he said, Well, uh, <laughs> I, I believe I could make it across, but um, uh, I happen to know that this is the natural habitat of the American alligator. And uh, that is a creature I do not wish to meet halfway across any waterway, if you know what I mean. Big Billy Goat Gruff, he looked around, said, bridge. So they went looking for that bridge. So they're walking along the river there. Little Billy Goat Gruff, he was the first one to see it. He saw that bridge up there in the distance. So he ran up to the bridge, and he's going across the bridge. Trip, 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 trip. And about halfway across, he heard the most awfulest sound he'd ever heard. And he turned around and saw the meanest looking, hungriest looking thing he'd ever seen. He didn't know what it was. He said, oh, what are you? Why do you look so mean and hungry? And the thing said, I'm a troll, and I am mean, and I am hungry, and I'm about to eat you for my lunch. Well, that was a pretty scary situation, but that little baby goat Gruff was a pretty smart goat. So he said, oh, well, Mr. Troll, as you can see, I'm very little. I don't think I'd even make a taste for you, much less a snack. But I have a wonderful idea. If you'll just let me go, I'm going to go over there to that pasture over there, and I'm going to eat grass all summer long, and then in the fall, you can eat me then. The troll scratched his head and said, but I'm hungry now. The little baby goat gruff said, oh, well, I've got a perfect solution for you, you see. My brother is coming along just behind me, and, and he's bigger than me. I think you'll find him very tasty. So you can eat him today, and then in the fall you can eat me. Now you might be wondering why that little billy goat gruff was so willing to throw his brother under the bus like that and feed him to the troll. Well, he knew how smart his older brother was, and he figured he'd be all right. 
And right then, he just needed to get out of that situation. So the troll, he thought about it for a minute, as best he could. And he decided, yeah, have a goat today, a goat for later. That sounds like a good idea. You can go on. I'll wait for you, brother. So little baby goat grow, little Billy goat grow, got himself over that bridge as fast as he could. Troll slipped back under the bridge. A little while later, here comes the medium-sized Billy Goat Gruff. A trip, a trip, a trip, a trip, a trip. He's about halfway across that bridge and he hears that sound. <laughs> medium-sized Billy Goat Gruff turns around and cannot believe his eyes, standing right there in the middle of this bridge in the middle of North Carolina, was a troll. And he says, well, my dear sir, how, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I, I had no, ideas, uh, no idea that your species had made it this far away from the old country. I, I was given to understand that uh, your species originated in Norway and, and Denmark and other parts of Northern Europe. And Troll just looked at him like, what? I was born and raised right here in North Carolina, so I don't know what you're talking about, but I can tell you this. I'm a mean troll, and I'm a hungry troll, and I'm about to eat you for my lunch. The middle billy goat gruff was a pretty smart goat, and the troll was not that smart. So the medium-sized Billy Goat Gruff had a pretty good shot. And he said, well, Mr. Troll, any other day I would say it's your lucky day. But it just so happens that I've been on a detox all this week. Uh, I've hardly eaten anything but celery and water. And I've been doing my yoga. Mm, I feel so good. You, you should try it sometime. Um, but... In the interest of full disclosure, I must tell you, I'm probably about 0% body fat today and probably a little stringy if you were going to eat me today. However, if you will just let me go out there in that pasture, I will eat that green grass all summer long. And this fall, maybe about Thanksgiving, you can eat me then. How does that sound? Poor old troll. He shook his head. He said... <laughs> But I'm hungry now. Medium-sized Billy Goat Gruff says, Well, I have a perfect solution for that, don't you know? My brother, who is much larger than I am, and as a matter of fact, my brother is going to be the biggest Billy Goat that you have ever seen in your life, Mr. Troll. And if you will wait for him, uh, you can eat him today. And then you can eat me later. Doesn't that sound like a wonderful idea? <sighs> Troll had to admit, having two goats in the pasture and one goat on the plate sounded pretty good. So he said, all right, you go on. I'll wait for your brother. Medium-sized Billy Goat Gruff got himself off that bridge as fast as he could. Troll slipped back underneath the bridge and waited. And he waited there for a little while, and then the troll heard, trip, 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 trip. Troll looked up over the edge of the bridge, and what he saw there was the biggest billy goat he'd ever seen in his life. This billy goat had long, sharp horns. This billy goat had a red gleam in his eye. And this billy goat had big, heavy, cloven hooves. Troll looked at that billy goat. Billy goat looked at that troll. Troll said, I'm a mean and... Hungry, troll, and uh, I'm about to eat you for my lunch. Billy Goat says, yeah? Troll says, oh yeah. 
big Billy Goat Gruff didn't have nothing to say about that. He just reared back and BAM! Not that troll so hard. He flew up in the air 50 feet into the top of a long leaf pine tree and BAM! 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 Hit every branch on the way down. And when he hit the ground, he hit the ground running. And nobody ever saw that troll in that part of North Carolina again. Now, there's three morals to this story, depending on how you look at it. The first moral of the story is from the point of view of the troll. And that's this. If you're a mean and hungry troll, and you get a chance to eat, eat. Don't wait for something better to come along. If he'd have ate the first two goats, he might have had the strength to fight the third one. The second moral of the story is from the point of view of the little billy goat gruff and the medium-sized billy goat gruff, and that's this. Sometimes it might look like things are so bad that it's not going to get any better, but if you be cool and be smart, you might just be able to think your way out of it and be okay. Now, the third moral of the story is from the point of view of the big billy goat gruff. And that's this. Sometimes that troll is going to come to eat you. And when it does, you're going to have to fight him. Now, an old brawler told me this a long time ago. If somebody wants to fight you, you don't worry about whether you're going to win or lose. And you don't worry about how much it's going to hurt, because it's going to hurt. The only thing you're thinking about when you fight that troll is laying the worst hurting that you can on that thing so that if you do survive, it don't never want to come mess with you again. Now, the Billy Goat Scruff lived happily ever after. And as far as I know, they're probably standing in that pasture eating grass right now. 